Hello there! So you want to image fly wings? This video demonstrates a method to image the wing of a live fruit fly using a device we call the wing machine. The wing machine is a convenient tool because it allows us to quickly gather lots of measurements on each of my wings and to measure many of my friends and colleagues too. This helps us understand how we are different or similar and it causes no harm to the fly, which is great for me. In this video, you will learn how the wing machine is constructed, how it produces suction, and how it is used. The wing machine is composed of five pieces. The vacuum controller is attached to a pump and provides an adjustable air current the user can manipulate. The cover slip and microscope slide are attached by two strips of double-sided tape. This creates a slot in which the wing slides into. Finally, the body attaches the vacuum controller to the glass slide. As air is sucked through the hole in the bottom of the vacuum controller, the body seal creates a channel that directs the airflow through the space between the cover slip and the slide. When fully assembled, the wing machine allows the user to image a live fly's wing by manipulating suction. Through this process, the wing can be sucked in, held in place, and removed while causing no harm to the fly. A few other notes, the vacuum controller is the only part that needs to be custom made for this device. All of the bits are readily available lab supplies. The party is ordinary UHU of its tack. We simply had a machine shop make us a set of controllers out of solid brass one time, then they last forever. So how does the wing machine provide this adjustable air current? This is a cross section of the wing machine. The vacuum controller contains a simple system of channels through which air can move in and out of. Air is sucked towards the back of the controller via the connected pump. When the hole on top is uncovered, the majority of air suction occurs through the top. When the hole on top is covered, air is sucked through the bottom. This coupled with the body seal causes the air to flow in through the space between the cover slip and the microscope slide. When the wind machine is placed close to the fly, the suction draws the wind into the slot. A little pocket and prodding with a paintbrush can then position the wing in just the right spot for imaging. Once the fly screen is in place, the user can quickly move the wing machine to an imaging stand with little to no disturbance in the wing's position. This provides a fast and effective method for taking pictures in large quantities. So now that you've seen how the wind machine works, let's see it in action. So we have the parts to make our wind machine. We've assembled it. Now we need to set up our station. You will need a vacuum pump to connect to your wind machine, a CO2 station, a paintbrush, a microscope with a camera and the appropriate software, and of course, your flies. You will also need to calibrate your microscope and choose the appropriate settings before imaging. Once you are set up, turn on the vacuum pump. Next, knock out your flies with CO2 and dump them onto the power CO2 stage. 
Here, they can remain unconscious for up to 10 minutes without causing damage to the fly. Using the paintbrush, gently roll the fly toward the wind machine until the wind is sucked in and place it on the microscope. You can now adjust the position of the fly until your wind is in full view and make sure that it's a good image. Bad images would include wings with folds, our stairs, cropped off areas, damaged or crumpled areas, images with bad contrast, objects obscuring the veins, or images taken with dirty wind machines. Once you've taken a good picture, click continue to record the image. Our imaging program then asks the user to mark the position of two starting points on the wing. After the points have been marked, you can enter any important information about your fly. We use a variety of programs to assist in our collection and analysis of data. We have written a program called Wings, which quickly creates a quantitative model of the picture of the flywheel. The program fits these plans to the image that capture the position of each vein. This quantifies the detailed shape of each wing. These models are called splines. Usually, splining accurately summarizes the wing. Splining is not always perfect, however, and Wings makes it easy to detect and correct errors by hand. Wings can be used to measure individual wings. For example, if you want to decide whether a fly is suitable during a selection experiment or to measure a batch of hundreds or thousands of wings. We also use the program CP Reader to read the wing information for later analysis. This program combines the data from large numbers of wings into a single data file for analysis. It also does basic analysis of wing data, for example, to assist finding unusual wings. Finally, we use the program LORI to help visualize shape data, whether a wing or some other structure. It can make a variety of plots of differences between shapes, including movies. All of this software can be found at the link below. Once your flies have been imaged, they can then be placed back in their respective vials where they can wake up unharmed and ready for further experiments. So now you know it all. You know the materials you need, how to make the wind machine, and how to take images. Now you can go on your way and image your own flies.